In the tumultuous era of World War I, global industries were thrown into disarray by the great commodity crisis. However, among the many companies that were severely affected, the early Pepsi-Cola company experienced a particularly devastating blow. The soft drink upstart faced a daunting combination of soaring sugar prices, critical supply disruptions, failed market speculation, and an inflexible business model. These economic forces proved to be a toxic cocktail that the company struggled to overcome. Once upon a time, there was a soda enterprise called Pepsi. In just 10 short years, it went from being a small pharmacy in North Carolina to a global sensation. However, its success was short-lived, as unforeseen global events caused its downfall. Sugar, which transformed from a simple ingredient into a precious commodity, led Pepsi straight into bankruptcy. The chaotic era of World War I had a profound impact on the stability of sugar prices and supply worldwide, ultimately leading to the downfall of the early Pepsi-Cola company. In 1914, at the beginning of World War I, the price of sugar on U.S. commodity markets was approximately $5 per 100 pounds. However, in 1920, prices had skyrocketed to over $15 per 100 pounds which was almost three times the cost from just six years earlier. During the war years, a combination of factors came together to limit supply and ignite an unprecedented surge in prices. During the war, rationing became a common practice due to the challenges faced in obtaining sugar from countries like Cuba and Hawaii. The conflict's trade blockades and strained shipping lanes made it challenging to meet both military and civilian needs. In addition, the American public felt compelled to save sugar for the war effort. As supplies, both globally and domestically, continued to dwindle in the face of increasing demand, prices skyrocketed. The sugar price shock had a devastating impact on Caleb Bradham and his fledgling Pepsi-Cola company, which was still in its early years of operation. Being a new company operating in a highly competitive market, Pepsi faced significant challenges due to limited resources and production capabilities compared to well-established giants like Coca-Cola. Bradham's costs skyrocketed overnight, leading to a catastrophic outcome that was beyond his control. During the Great War, the scarcity and high cost of sugar posed a significant threat to Pepsi-Cola's business model. The syrup formula, which heavily relied on sugar as a key ingredient, was now in jeopardy. In addition to the chaos caused by market forces, the United States Food Administration took action in 1918 by implementing mandatory sugar rationing and price controls. Their goal was to bring stability to the volatile situation. Although initially intended to stabilize the situation, the wartime policies ended up worsening Pepsi-Cola's predicament. Amidst rationing and centralized price setting, obtaining affordable sugar in sufficient quantities for syrup production became an increasingly uncertain endeavor. Throughout the years, the Coca-Cola company had established a dominant position in the soda fountain syrup industry safeguarding its secret formula through a shroud of uncompromising in-house production. However, the young Pepsi-Cola company needed to have the advantage of a fully integrated supply chain. Instead, they had to rely on external sources to obtain all their ingredients from the open market. While its competitor was able to navigate the changing market conditions by making internal adjustments to its supply and pricing, Pepsi found itself vulnerable to unpredictable external factors. The prices fluctuated wildly due to limited supply, leaving Pepsi in a precarious position. Navigating this business landscape became even more uncertain with the imposition of rationing and pricing directives. In addition to the domestic uncertainties, the war's impact had a significant effect on global sugar supply channels, leading to a disruption in the United States' access to its usual import sources. In the early 1900s, a significant portion of sugar consumed in the United States was sourced from foreign countries. The reliance on tropical exporters such as Cuba, Hawaii, and the Philippines was firm, with over 75% of the sugar being imported from these regions. Nevertheless, the global import flow was severely hampered due to trade blockades, naval warfare disrupting shipping lanes, and economic turmoil in exporting countries as a result of the First World War. In a twist of fate, the American market found itself in the clutches of a supply-demand imbalance. With primary sources suddenly constrained and rationing already in place, the production of sugar was severely restricted. The scarcity of sugar and exorbitant price spikes sent shockwaves through the nation. When it came to selling a 12-ounce bottle of sweet soda syrup for a mere 5 cents at retail, 
Pepsi faced a significant hurdle. The soaring cost of sugar, a crucial ingredient, swiftly wiped out whatever meager profit margin they had. The war, though fought in distant lands, had far-reaching economic consequences that reverberated across the globe. In the end, the extensive disruption caused by World War I had a profound impact on the global sugar industry, which had negative consequences for a young soda company. In 1923, Pepsi-Cola faced a significant setback when it declared bankruptcy. The company's failure to protect itself from the unpredictable sugar prices played an essential role in this downfall. Instead of taking measures to mitigate the risks associated with price volatility, Pepsi-Cola made speculative bets on the sugar market, which ultimately proved to be detrimental. Pepsi's production costs were at the mercy of unpredictable market fluctuations due to the absence of pre-arranged fixed-price supply contracts. By choosing to place their bets on the volatile global commodity market, instead of pursuing secure contracts, Caleb Bradham and his managers willingly embraced a significant and avoidable gamble. In the face of uncontrollable circumstances and the unpredictable effects of war, they opted for a risky approach that prioritized chance rather than sound business principles. When the price of sugar during wartime skyrocketed unexpectedly, their speculative investments came crashing down. Pepsi-Cola's management, in an attempt to manipulate its sourcing, ultimately led to the downfall of its once thriving company. They failed to ensure that their production expenses could be controlled, which had a direct impact on their financial stability. Amidst the swirling rumors and the challenges of securing supply contracts, Pepsi found itself in a precarious situation. In contrast, Coca-Cola, its main rival, managed to navigate the volatile ingredients market with relative ease. This was mainly due to Coca-Cola's strategic advantage of having its sugar plantations, which provided a stable and reliable source of ingredients. Compared to Pepsi-Cola, which relied heavily on outside purchases in an unstable free market, Coca-Cola had much more control over supply and prices, since it directly cultivated and refined a significant amount of the sugar required for its trademark syrup. During World War I, the considerable level of vertical integration proved to be a crucial advantage when sugar prices became highly volatile on a global scale. Thanks to Coca-Cola's self-sufficiency in sugar production, they were able to avoid immediately passing on the increased market prices to their customers. Pepsi did not have the same level of protection. With each increase in the commodity exchange, Pepsi found itself having to shell out more and more money to external suppliers, putting a tight squeeze on its profit margins. Coca-Cola's cost control advantage proved to be a crucial factor in helping it navigate through challenging times, while its competitors struggled to stay afloat. Pepsi-Cola faced numerous challenges that were beyond its control, making it difficult for the company to maintain its stability. During World War I, as the cost of sugar skyrocketed, Pepsi made an effort to maintain a retail price of five cents for its bottles, ensuring that it remained affordable for the average consumer. However, due to the significant portion of product costs attributed to sugar, this price point provided very little protection against increasing input prices during production. Back in the day, the price of sugar skyrocketed, wiping out any hope of making a decent profit on a humble five cent bottle. The company found itself in a predicament where it couldn't pass on the higher sugar cost to customers and increase the price of a nickel. This was due to the concern of being outdone by competitors such as Coca-Cola, who had greater leeway when it came to profit margins. Bradham was under immense pressure to protect Pepsi's market share, which was established to its strong reputation for providing value. However, due to its fragile cost structure and insistence on keeping retail prices extremely low, Pepsi found itself on the brink of bankruptcy. Ultimately, the business model proved to be ill-equipped to handle the intense pressures it faced on such a large scale. By 1923, the losses became unsustainable due to persistent wartime sugar inflation, which continued to inflate expenses while revenue remained static. During the sugar crisis of World War I, Pepsi-Cola's unwavering dedication to its five-cent price point proved to be its downfall, despite its significance for branding and sales.